babies for sale. This lucrative illegal trade is openly advertised on Malaysian social media. Potential buyers can pick from a catalog of pregnant women, customizing a child by gender, color, and race. It's driven by a web of agents, doctors, and corruption. I'm Steve Chow. On this episode of One on One East, we go undercover in Malaysia to expose its shadowy baby selling industry. We've got pajamas for Tara's house. Yes. And pajamas for Mama's house. Hartini Zainuddin adopted her daughter Zara when she was just three months old. But it wasn't a normal adoption. This is for your swimming. Yeah. We've got this. It's inside already. Adoption in Malaysia has a dark side, one that Hartini knows all too well. This one too? As a child rights activist, she is familiar with how traffickers sell babies for illegal adoptions in the region. It's a huge problem. Baby selling in Malaysia, it happens within the country. Babies are exported to Singapore, etc. And babies are brought in from Thailand and Cambodia. But eight years ago, Hartini found herself caught up in the illegal baby trade. Traffickers had called her after they failed to sell a baby. I have a reputation for picking out all these babies, and so they told me about this baby um, who was in Klang um, that needed a good home. Hartini agreed to meet them, thinking she was just going to pick up another unwanted baby whom she would send to a shelter. So silly me went into the car with two complete strangers and went to see this baby, thinking that I was just going to pick her up. And they said, no, 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 no. This is how much, this is how much tea money or whatever you need to, to pay. And then I was like, oh my God, and I knew. Hartini realised she was in a car with two traffickers who wanted to sell her the baby. The tense one-hour drive from Kuala Lumpur took her to the town of Klang. Hartini arrived at a house where she met another woman and the baby girl who was for sale. The woman said a Malaysian family had agreed to buy the child for 5,000 US dollars, but changed their mind when they saw her. They said her skin was too dark. Unable to find other buyers, she offered Hartini the baby for $3,000. She said, if you don't take her, I'm going to take her to Pulau Ketam and we're going to send her to Thailand. So I actually said, excuse me, stepped outside, called a friend of mine from another NGO and go, what's Pulau Ketam and what is Thailand? What do they mean by Pulau Ketam and Thailand? And she said, oh my God, get her out. And I said, why? And they said, because she's going, she's targeted for begging in Thailand, so they were most probably going to maim her, so get her out now. It's like, pay whatever you need to pay, get her out. Hartini felt she had no choice and made a decision that would change her life forever. She agreed to buy the baby. On her return to Kuala Lumpur, Hartini made a report to the police and the government's social welfare department. I told the police and I told welfare and I said and I sit them on them and they went in and they did the raid and And you explained why you had to do yeah. it to them. And I said you're not taking this baby. The traffickers escaped arrest. Meanwhile, Martini was able to adopt Zara. But the legal adoption process has been long, expensive and emotionally draining. After eight years, she finally became Zara's legal parent. But Zara is still not considered a Malaysian citizen. We've been running around in circles for three years. It took me five years to get her birth certificate. It takes me another three years to put in you know, her application for citizenship, and I'm still waiting. For now, Zara has no access to public education and health care. And there are more worrying implications in the future if nothing changes. She's not going to be able to get a passport. She's not be able to get married. She can't open a bank account. Um, she basically has no status. 
With the complex legal adoption process and the difficulties obtaining citizenship, many childless couples look for other ways to start a family. Traffickers are ready to offer one. And now, they hide behind the veil of the internet to advertise babies for sale. They're getting more sophisticated, definitely. You can do it online. You can choose your baby online. In a lot of um, the cataloging for baby selling, you have um, Chinese, Malay, you have Chindian, Chindian and beautiful. So they're right, right up there with the Ch Chinese babies. So that's how it goes. It's completely, you know, it's like, it's like a supermarket. A simple search takes us to some of the websites and social media pages. It's easy to pose as someone who wants to adopt and join the groups. A wealth of information awaits. Some give advice on adoption. Others offer avenues for mothers with unwanted pregnancies to give up their babies. No questions asked. Popular posts describe the baby's due date, expected medical costs and the payment which is called a consolation fee. A baby's price is determined by gender, colour and race. So the lighter skin, if a male, higher price. The darker skin, girl, lower price. Um, and then if you're a mix, higher price. We focus on one Facebook user who we suspect is a baby seller. She's been seeking adoptive parents for babies from different women. She calls herself Bonda which is Malay for mother. Over several text messages, we arrange a meeting with her. She sends us her bank details and asks for a booking fee if we wish to register our interest. Posing as potential buyers, our undercover team, wearing hidden cameras, meets Bonda in a town on the west coast of Malaysia. Assalamualaikum. Hi, Bonda. Yes. As a precaution, I monitor the conversation from a distance and soon detect red flags for cross-border trafficking. Bonda says she only offers pregnant women from Indonesia because she's found locals sometimes change their minds. Bonda says it costs up to $2,500 to buy a baby, complete with falsified birth documents. It doesn't seem like big money for the baby seller, until she drops a bombshell. So she claims to be housing dozens of pregnant women in a few shelters. We're trying to find out exactly where, but she refuses to say anything. So let's see how much more we can push her. But Bonda doesn't buckle. Instead, she tries to seal the deal for a pregnant woman about to deliver with a lower fee of $1,500. We ask for more time to consider our options. Three weeks later, we return with food supplies for the pregnant women. Bonda still refuses to let us visit the shelters, but she brings four pregnant women to meet us at her house. Two of them look like teenagers. Bonda answers most of our questions for them. We also find out how she makes the illegal adoptions look legal with a payment to the police. Oh, 
A few days later, Bonda sends a photo catalogue of more pregnant women for us to pick from with their names, jobs and stages of pregnancy. She wants money to provide further information and to help the women, she says. We decide it's too risky to continue and cut her loose. Bonda is not the only one housing pregnant women and selling their babies. Malaysian authorities have busted several unlicensed shelters in recent years. They provide refuge for women, fearful of the stigma they face for getting pregnant out of wedlock. These women have either run away from home or been kicked out by their families. They stay out of the public eye, often coming out only at night, living secret lives until their babies are born. It's impossible to know how many babies end up being sold, but finding one to buy is as simple as scrolling through some adoption websites. Posing as an interested couple, we contact someone who is offering a baby. The next step of our investigation shows just how easy it is to buy one directly from a mother, yeah. thanks to the internet. So she is a five months old pregnant okay. now. I mean, almost six. Wearing hidden cameras, we meet a group of young Filipino women. They say they're all working in Malaysia and share a flat together. One of them is pregnant We'll call her Jane. She's keen to give up her baby yeah, um, for a fee. The baby is healthy and actually the baby starts moving now. Oh. <laughs> I really think the baby is very big. Moving here, moving there. Because it's a big decision. We, we, we just really want to find out more about you, that's all. Yeah. Jane says she was employed as a maid, but her work visa has expired. By law, migrant workers are not allowed to bear children in Malaysia. If she gives birth here, Jane's baby will be stateless. So were there any like any other people who were inquiring about this? Yes, a lot, a lot. Jane shows us a recent ultrasound scan. It's a boy. The women propose a fee that adds up to $2,000. We would have to pay extra for Jane's monthly checkups and the delivery costs. If you are willing to, do you, do you want to give it monthly? or like in one shot, or half-half. Can I meet you here? We join them at Jane's next prenatal checkup. All right, so you got a head there, you got a spine there, you got a heart there, you got a liver there. So nothing is missing. So. Having assured us of the baby's health, the women explain the next step, getting falsified birth documents. As Hartini found out when she bought Zara, the child will have no legal status without the right paperwork. If you have plan to adopt the baby, it should be under your name so that everything is alright. There's no a lot of questions. They say we have to get a doctor to change the mother's name on the prenatal medical records, replacing Jane's name with our own. After the birth, the fake documents are submitted to the government registry which issues the birth certificate with our names as the real parents. This way, no one would ever know the baby isn't ours. Probing deeper into the illicit network, we are introduced to a man who can do more than falsify birth documents. Dr. Pania says he can also help us find a baby to buy by connecting us with pregnant Malaysians and foreigners who want to sell their babies. We tell him we'd like a Chinese baby. But if a Chinese baby will expensive. Like, they charge for 30k. 30k for the baby alone. That excludes the fees for his services. So everything all in now will be about 20k. Like, all set up. Now. All with the birth certificate, delivery, everything. Everything is included. We continue our chat in the privacy of a clinic nearby where he works. He says Chinese babies are harder to come by, but his contacts can provide other options. Wait, let me call my friend Yap and Sina. Yeah. These are all, they all got deal. 
Mm-hmm. Vietnam is okay, isn't it? They, are, they look like Chinese. Like. Sometimes uh, this Indonesian and then boyfriend Chinese, uh, that also I got. They also look like Chinese. So how come you got such good connections? I got a lot of love. Uh, <laughs> Malaysia, anything can. The money can do anything like uh, So who? What? And Malaysia is the second correct. <laughs> <laughs> He tells us the money trail goes to high places, right up to the government's National Registration Department, known as JPN, which issues birth certificates. People were doing in JPN the paperwork and these girls. Are, they won't go and talk. I've already done so many. I think they will. Okay. So you know them, ah? You, you can get, guarantee the safety. Yeah. Because ah. once a certificate in your hand ready, ah, okay, that's Steady. all. Keep quiet. And just like that, we are on track to buy a baby we can pass off as our own. We contact Dr. Panier and Bonda again to give them a chance to respond to the evidence we have gathered. When we identify ourselves as journalists, they both deny their involvement in any wrongdoing and decline to speak with us further. We uncover more links between the medical sector and the authorities when we investigate a medical chain, Gamma Medic. Its website says it has five clinics serving more than a hundred companies. We learn that it is a family business. The group chairman has the honorific title of Datuk Sri, the highest recognition for those who have contributed to the state. The managing director is his wife, and the director, his son. We send an undercover team posing as a couple who wants to buy a baby to one of their clinics run by his daughter-in-law, also a doctor. So, 25 is a delivery charge and the BC charge will be set. BC refers to birth certificate. You don't have to be nervous because we do this on like a very regular basis. Okay. I think that's how the word of mouth spread that we actually do the BCs. Her husband, the director of the medical group, is okay. also in the room. I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> they show us the papers to be submitted to the National Birth Registry, JPN. So this was actually one of the cases which we have done before. We'll give you that, a copy of the injection card and the appointment card. Because these are the essential documents that we will give you to give to JPN. Once at a JPN branch, she says, their contacts inside will take over. So we have one uh, officer, so-called, in, in each of these JPNs. We've got about eight under whom we pay also. So we will tell you the date, the time, and which JPN to go to. So that shouldn't be a problem. The falsified documents are submitted with a batch of genuine ones. We have an average delivery of 30 deliveries a week. So we'll just slot you in one of those. If they reach that, it's just a detection. So they will query the hospital actually. We will just uh, pay them off, you know, <laughs> one, two, three. <laughs> and then it's done. Do this for more than three years. It's like that. Time. So there's no, no problem with that, actually. These astounding that. admissions of long-term corruption were captured by hidden cameras. No. I'm uh, Chan Tao Cho from Al Jazeera. Uh-huh. So we return for an official response from the owners of the medical group. Uh, um, we have gathered uh, evidence suggesting that Gamma Medic is involved with helping childless couples with illegal adoptions and falsifying birth certificates. Would you like to respond to that, please? <laughs> anyway, I don't have time. It's just suddenly, it's just popping just like that. Yeah, we could arrange another time. Uh, let me see. Yeah? Okay. Uh, but they reject how, how further attempts to arrange an interview. It's, uh, it's actually better if you could just uh, give us a response. No, I told you I'll call you. We also approach the National Registration Department about the alleged corruption among its officers, but they refuse to respond. You have to facilitate an easier Activists way say the lack of law enforcement has created an even more sinister side to the illicit trade. With decades of experience in rescuing trafficked women and children, 
Angel Fernandez has seen the worst in baby selling. Women were being brought in for the purpose of a job, but they were then kept locked up, confined, then subsequently raped, and then the babies were being sold. Angel says Malaysia's underground sex trade has been cashing in on the baby selling business. We were also dealing with sex workers. And there were, of course, clinics that were identified that where these women were taken to to deliver the babies and to have their uh, falsified uh, birth certificates done and all. No problem. Counselors for sex workers tell us the women used to avoid getting pregnant. But that has changed. They become pregnant, no abortions. She delivers the baby and the baby will be sold. So now you have a trafficker who make triple the amount of money. Over several weeks of investigating a notorious red light district where sex syndicates traffic women from the region, we get to know one of the pimps who tells us we can buy a baby for $7,500. His nights are busy, so we arrange to meet in the daytime at a hotel nearby. We are concealing his identity to protect our sources who led us to him. He gets down to business, offering a range of women. <laughs> If you can find for me uh, Vietnamese, Chinese, okay. Japanese. Satu minggu, minggu tolong saya pikir lagi main tambah. Okay, boleh baik lagi. Saya tolong awak. It's clear anything is possible with money. He says his network of pimps will deliver what I want. Itu kerang kerang Cina aja nada. Cina tu nabi saya tu kumpang mana. Cina nabi saya. Within a week, he calls to confirm pregnant sex workers are available for me to buy a baby from. Or I could even choose a sex worker to impregnate. get the sense that some of these people do believe that they're helping out childless couples or women with unwanted pregnancies for the right fee. But across this whole chain, the focus is always on the price, the process and protection from the law. There are no proper checks whatsoever on the backgrounds of the adoptive families and just whether they make good parents. So what that means is it completely overlooks the best interests of the child. If they're lucky, the children end up in good homes. But those who don't may be groomed for pedophiles or exploited by bagging syndicates. These babies are bought by syndicates. These children, when they come to the age of eight, are then used for sex work, pedophiles. For me, the anger is on our own Malaysians, our own state, our own authorities, because of that I don't care attitude. What happens to a young child who's begging in the streets or a child who is being sold, you don't care because you don't want to see, you don't want to hear. And it is better for the traffickers. Eight years ago, child activist Hartini Zainuddin couldn't turn a blind eye when traffickers threatened to send baby Zara to a bagging syndicate. <laughs> Zara might have suffered a grim fate if Hartini hadn't made the tough call to buy her from the traffickers. It's a decision she still grapples with 
and one she wishes was never possible. Baby selling has an element of exploitation because the child has no voice um, and therefore it should be considered trafficking. The voice of the child is not heard. The baby never got a chance to say, I don't want to go, I want to go. Nobody asked the baby. The baby's a baby, right? You say, well, I'll make the decision for you. You don't have that right. But until legal adoption in Malaysia becomes more accessible and until the laws against selling babies are enforced, childless couples will continue to buy infants and traffickers will continue to profit by exploiting vulnerable women and children. <laughs>